Hey guys, Simon here from Simon Says Cycling and Gourmet Cycling Travel. That's why I have the Ride Wine Dine on my t-shirt. And today I'm excited to talk to my dear friend Dirk Barkel, one of the best triathletes of his generation. First off the bike in the Beijing Olympics. If you watch the Olympics, you'll see him in the breakaway out front mm -hmm. with, with his friend from Belgium. And they rode away from the pack and he led the Olympics on the, into the run. Pretty exciting. And then went on to a long distance career where he won multiple Ironmans including uh, Disney, including the half Ironman, including Asia Pacific in Melbourne, fourth in Kona, third in the long course world championships, fourth, fa fifth fastest in history. Does that mm -hmm. time still stand? Uh, it's not the fifth fastest time anymore. So I think I'm still in the top 10, but the last few years there were a couple of super fast performances out there. So I think I'm barely holding on to the top 10 there right now. So, but seven hours and 52 minutes, right? That's correct, yeah. And there was a run of like 2.47 after the bike? 2.48, I believe it was. Yeah. It's Close, crazy. Yeah. And on the bike, you were riding at around 300 watts for how many miles? Like 111 miles? 112 miles. And it was exactly 296 watts normalized power for, I think it was exactly four hours and 15 minutes and a few seconds. And that kind Insane. of folded me crazy insane ability and, and plus add the swim i mean that's a whole nother level right there so <laughs> yeah. it's crazy what this guy's <laughs> achieved really exciting to pick his brain and uh, today we want to talk about really the mental side because you know when you're in that ironman triathlon and you're going to that last hour i mean i can only imagine what your body's going through you must be in complete pain you must be wondering what, what am i doing here how do you <laughs> How do you get through those moments where it's like, mm -hmm. I know I saw photos of your feet, the one race where there oh, was completely blood, blood everywhere, pain. no toenails. No pain, no gain, right? <laughs> I mean, extreme, extreme, right? So how do you push yourself so much further than the average person is willing to push themselves? Well, I mean, obviously I always say the same thing. It's like, if you know why you want to achieve that and you define your why, why do you want to do that? Why do you want to go to Kona or why do you want to be on that podium and then you find a way so it's all about your in, internal motivation factors that you that you want to you know your list whatever you want to achieve and well it's a lot of work uh, once you get there but you know also this is the day on that specific day that that specific time and that's a lot of pressure for a lot of people to deal with it so when you're out there and you're suffering the longer the race goes on obviously the more tired you get and then it gets really you know, you get those two two guys on the on each shoulder, and the one guy says, "Well, you know, you've been out here for a couple of hours, you know." And it's like, "Oh yeah, I mean, you can do it." And it's like, "Nah, you know." So you find a hundred thousand reasons why you should stop because your whole body is aching and it's crying for a break, for more water, and just it's a lot of pain out there. So um, I think you need to really know what you do, and then you play your little mental tricks of, you know till the last corner till the next corner and then obviously it always depends on tactic if you're running up front you you already feel good and there might be endorphins and you're gonna keep pushing but if it's not going according to plan then it gets very very interesting like how do you motivate yourself and so it sounds like um you really break it down to this moment as much as possible like let me get through this next moment there's the finish the next just around that corner i'm almost done even though you may not be done you're playing those mental games just to bring you back to the present moment because i think mm. What happens with many people, most people, is that when you get overwhelmed, it's because you're projecting into the future. You're thinking, wow, I'm suffering so much now. There's no way I can handle the next two hours, right? Sure. So the mind is always projecting into the future. But if you dial it back into this second or this next five seconds, you can always handle this next five seconds. No matter how much pain you're in, Absolutely. you can always handle this next second, right? It's but you got to practice that. It doesn't come naturally. So you got to just play those little tricks and you know exactly if you're in the middle of your bike section and an Ironman might last eight hours for, for a professional athlete. So if you're in the middle of the bike, you know you have so and so many miles, so and so many hours still ahead of you. So you do just need to gauge a little bit your energy levels. But what you're saying is absolutely right. You go to the next turn, you go to the next mile marker and you, you see the next competitor and you can always measure the distance. So you got to make achievable but small steps because it's a long day and eight hours of racing there's a lot of things that can happen you know some of our fellow uh, amateur athletes they might be out there for 14 hours and that's 14 hours of nutrition you got to worry about 14 hours of mental game so um but i think it's a, it's a it's a typical game that you're playing in your head and you can practice that on your long rides on your long runs you just need to be prepared of what is coming up and if you if you're be, like days or even weeks before the race you know we did all these mental games before that you practiced with me um that you just visualize 
see yourself in that moment of struggle. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, if you push to your maximum, you're going to feel exhausted. So if you prepare yourself before the race, you know, oh, man, I'm in that situation now. And I told myself I can do it. And it becomes more a natural thought for you. And you're dealing with it a little bit easier. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it. You know, in my experience, the more you visualize the race coming up, the effort you're going to put in, mm. when you find yourself on race day, it's like you've been there already. It's like exactly. everything just flows. It's like your body knows what to do. What's to do? It's already done it in, in your visualizations. It's, mm. It doesn't know the difference between visualizations and actually. No, you being can trick your mind, which is a scary thing. Like this side of the brain tells you how to trick that side. So you have two people inside that head who kind of, you know, it gets a little funny, but. Uh, those games are, do really work. Every pro athlete uses those. But if you think about it, if you train, you train 99% of your body. I mean, this thing up here, that, that's going to decide if you actually want to race and how good you want to race and if you want to push that last little percentage out of your body. And that's the difference of winning or maybe making a podium or the top 10 or whatever. And, you know, you guys might think, okay, for you pros, it's a different game, but it doesn't matter. Winning is a, is a champion thing, but everybody is a champion in itself. You know, it doesn't matter if it's, it's not just the number one spot. It's your own goal. And if you achieve your own goal, you're a champion as well. Yeah, those are wise, wise words for sure. And it's so true. You know, we pay so much emphasis these days on, you know, the training, the numbers, the, the equipment, the nutrition, all these, these mm. factors that are often outside of ourselves that we're placing so much emphasis on. Yet, really, what's pushing the whole thing forward is your mental state, and, your, and that's really what's driving everything. And, and if you spend the time taking care of the mental state, then the results will come. So I, I remember uh, we, we always try to find another two watts with that specially coated chain and that aero helmet, and, and maybe use those, those aerodynamic um, you know, long sleeves and stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, that's like the 2% maybe. So you can focus on the big picture, which is your bike position. That's 10 times more important than all this rolling resistance, which tire you're going to use, tubular, clincher. I mean, it's so so difficult. So I always tell them, like, don't look just at your material. Like, that. influence what you can influence. And this thing up here, this is what's going to make the decision at the very end when it gets really tough. And if you practice that, you're going to have 10 times more benefit than a brand new bike or the special shoes that's supposed to do this and that and that. That's just the industry. So I want to just advise you and like spend time thinking, reflecting, preparing before races. You get 10 times more out of it. Awesome. Really wise words there. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. And check out Dirk's book, The Art of Triathlon Training. Just came out. Really great stuff in there. Yeah. And <laughs> we want to wish you all the best in your cycling and your triathlon racing. Thank you.